Hello and welcome to episode 16 of Carvers and Creators, a weekly demonstration and discussion with pumpkin carvers, sculptors, and multi-talented artists. We humbly ask that you please consider giving us a like and a follow on the platform that you're watching us on. And please let us know in the comments where you're watching from and if you have any questions for the carvers. My name is Michael Mondragon. I'll be running the show, moderating comments, chiming in from time to time. Maybe I might pick up a pumpkin as well. But let's meet the Carvers. First, he is a multimedia sculpture artist from Tucson, Arizona, and a finalist on uh, the Halloween Wars 2019 on the Food Network. Matt Harper, welcome. Hey, guys. Hey. What's up, boys? Good to be here. Yeah. <laughs> and our regular and guest Carver tonight are on location. First, he is an artist and sculptor from Boston, Massachusetts. He is a 2019 champion of Food Network's Outrageous Pumpkins. Paul Dever, welcome. What's up, everybody? Hello, Boy. hello. Paul from Chicago. <laughs> and our guest carver for today, making his second appearance on Carvers and Creators, is from Putnam Valley, New York. He is a pumpkin carver and painter. He competed last year against Paul on Outrageous Pumpkins. Please welcome the incredibly talented John Davis. Welcome back, brother. How you doing, John? Now I have I have him uh, lowered because I, so we don't have the feedback. Okay, so uh, yeah, that helps. They are at the Chicago Botanic Garden in Glencoe, Illinois. They are participating in the Night of a Thousand Jack O' Lanterns, where hand carved pumpkins, some up uh, large as 150 pounds, will light up the night. This event is sold out, so don't try to go down there. Don't you can't get tickets. Uh, <laughs> We made sure that we told people that, but this looks like an incredible event, Paul. Like, uh, tell me more about it. Really is. It's amazing. This will be my fourth year doing the event, and every year it's sold out. And every year it's a little bit better. Uh, obviously, strange time, the mask and everything, but the show's been going off with a hitch. Um, we got some beautiful pumpkins. I'll give you a, let's just give you a quick little run through here before we get going. So. This is John and I's station for where we set up, and everybody watches us live. Carve. This is uh, this is what we pulled off last night. So I did the man wow. in the moon. <laughs> That's awesome. So good. Oh, I uh, love that guy. <laughs> and then uh, John started a pretty intense werewolf. Got to get some teeth on him. Yeah, he's got to get his teeth rolling tight. Got that going. He's he just okay from this angle. That only. Yeah, John's <laughs> killing it. Oh, there we go. Yeah, look at that. Pops. Nice. <laughs> John, John got to jump on me. He was here for two weeks. I just got here the other day. So All right. He's been yeah. What do you mean? I'm a harder worker. He's, yeah, he's a harder worker than me, basically. <laughs> right it's 70 degrees here in Chicago, which is crazy. And it's and, uh, it's 6 o'clock. Is that right? 6? Just yeah. after 6. Right? Okay. So the show is officially just open. They're letting people in now. So... Let's get after it, I guess. Huh? Wow. What are you guys going to hold on? I jumped the gun. I apologize. I'm a little frazzled because I'm on location. But All right. you're, you're, yeah, a little, little leeway for Paul tonight. I will be drinking 12 <laughs> FLOCs of black Starbucks coffee this evening because I'm working. <laughs> yeah, yes. at least we're toasting with something. I like it. And I had something. I had a beverage of choice. Not my choice, but a beverage. <laughs> Nicely done. Does John have anything? John now has a black skin. cup of coffee in his hand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. What do, you got? what do you got, Matt? Mickey, I went with a uh, a non beer because I I have I have a Stella, but you know, so I went with the uh, I went with a Lemmy tonight at J Jack and Coke. There you Woo! go. Right on. And I have the uh, Mayberry IPA from El Segundo Brewing. So one of my favorites, El Segundo. Um, is you uh, might know of the uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin beer, so they they do that one. Oh wow! It's also I left my wallet in El Segundo. Yes, <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> so right, so cheers. um, yeah cheers, yeah, cheers to everybody. Thank you so much, and uh, thank you for joining us. We have a lot of people uh, in, so let's uh, uh, mix Frazzle Stash Studio from Perry, Ohio. Very nice. Perry thank is. you so much, Steve. Thank you for joining. Oh, look, 
he's in carving a Deer Park Mall, so he's already in Illinois. Like, nice, nice. Yeah. And Steve yeah. carved there before. That's cool. Paul, you have somebody, hey. uh, Nitwit928. <laughs> What's up, buddy? Noreen, thank you for joining. Hi, hey. Noreen. Cheryl? Oh, hey, Cheryl. I got to start doing it this way. I'm in opposite. Oh. Yes. Hey. Annette? Annette, hi. Paul, well represented here tonight. Paul's yeah, killing it. That's it. So people are really the, liking this of, so far. What's not to like, Mickey? Come on. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Looks like total yeah, fun. Matt, what do you got? You gotta see, you gotta see what Matt did. All right. So, yeah, you know so, I, so so far I've got kind of a um, my tribute to Sigmund Sea Monster. But um, he's kind of got I I gotta scoot him back look so you can see it better. But uh, so it's just a work in progress. But I, I started out last night. I had a one one giant pumpkin. This thing's a beast and it's heavy, which is which is exactly what you want. Um, and so I'm like, I had no clue in my brain what to start carving. So I literally started making lines on them. And I figured, all right, well, okay, how about that's like something dripping? And then I made it started a face underneath it, and it turned out to be this guy. So. If you guys remember the 70s cartoon, this Sid and Marty Croft, um, like uh, Sigmund the Sea Monster, Sigmund and the Sea Monster, whatever. So he, he has that one same tooth, but I'm going to make this guy kind of a demented uh, version of that one. I don't know what's on him. Maybe it's, uh, you know, syrup or maybe it's just like ooze from the depths of hell. I don't know yet. <laughs> we shall see. I love it. We shall see. Time will tell. I had to set up my iPad so we could see it, see it in a nice big screen. John and I oh, could. Yeah. Nice. You know, we're, we're going. To, I we got the iPhone Studio working right now. So it little, works. We're making it work. And I see. I see. So, John's got that. Got that bird eye view going there. We got. We got him from really a mile cool. away looking down. I like it. Well, he's like you. He's so damn tall you can't put it in a regular height. It has to be up on a. Like a panoramic angle to get the whole kid in. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna cue in on him in a second. But Steve says he's carving a 600 pound pumpkin right now. Oh my wow. god! Steve, wow. kind of send, us, send us pictures, Steve. Please. Yeah, I we need pictures see, of that. What you make? That's awesome. So I don't know where you John. get your hands on one of those the big things. Oh, there we go. Oh, looking good, John. So, what what are you gonna make the teeth out of? More pumpkin? We, well, yeah, he wanted to know what you're going to make teeth out of. Uh, I'm going to do a potato, and then uh, this potato, I think I'm going to use for either the, uh, the tongue or possibly the tongue and the gums or something. Um, so it's going to take me a while. Um, if I could just, like, I'm hoping to kind of get the structure of the face kind of blocked out before okay. it through. Because we're kind of at the end of the trail, so I think they're sending through now, but we probably have, like, 25 minutes before... Uh, we got a real audience. So you described the people coming back. You guys are towards the back of the event, effectively. Is that how that works? A big long trail that all and lined with pumpkins that gets to you guys. Is that what happens? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I had to hold the mic for him. <laughs> oh, yeah, the mic okay. on. We're, we're passing around the hockey puck. Yeah, they put <laughs> they put John. We're we're uh, we're at the end of the uh, the entire show, which is. Oh, Which nice. is pretty nice. cool. That is cool. I like, I like to say they're trying to push us out the door, but you know, sometimes they're saving us for last, I guess. There you go. That's the way to look at it. You're best for last, you know. The show's, the show's much bigger this year for uh, safety, safety reasons, obviously. You know, more room to social distance, and it's actually, I think it makes the show better. It's just there's more pumpkins to see, and I'll take you guys for a walk in a little while to see. Maybe we'll, we'll go check in on Rachel. Oh, yeah, that'd be great. Up. Yeah. Um, one, one thing, Nikki, I want to mention real quick. I don't know if um, this is probably a good time to talk about it, but uh, there's a, a really wonderful YouTube show called Good Mythical Morning. And Paul and I, on Tuesday the 27th, will be doing some wonderful things on that program. So I, yeah. if, if you know the show, Good Mythical Morning, Rhett and Link, if you don't know the show, just go to YouTube. Or go to anywhere. Go to go to Google and just type in "Good Mythical Morning" GMM. If you type in the letters GMM, you're gonna find it. But make sure you're watching the show. 
uh, on Tuesday the 27th. And it, it airs really early in the morning. It's a great uh, show for all ages. Um, and Rhett and Link are amazing uh, hosts. And they've, they've got literally thousands of shows under their belt. But, um, but this one is going to be quite special for you all of you f wonderful people who have been watching Carvers and Creators and for a really fun reason. So you'll love it. Um, and Mickey just pulled up a great picture. Yeah, so good mythical morning, GMM. Check it out. Um, and all I can say is there's going to be some magic happening um, that Paul and I uh, got to partake in on that wonderful show on the 27th. It just it's all I can really say, but just don't don't miss it. Paul, yeah, you have my friend. Great plug, buddy. Yeah. This is this is super exciting, and uh, and to think that we've only been doing this show since July, um, and uh, the fact that you guys are on this show is is quite incredible. And I want you, I want everybody to look under that good mythical morning, sixteen point seven million subscribers. So this show is nuts. I mean, uh, TV shows wish they had a million people watching uh, at once. So th this is incredible numbers. Um, so congratulations to both of you. Uh, totally well deserved. Yeah, it'll be uh, it'll be a ton of fun. It'll be a ton of fun. So just make sure you're watching. So Mickey, are you carving tonight? Or are you hanging out, buddy? You know, I I didn't know how um, much of technical stuff I'm gonna do. One thing that I'm, I I want to do is uh, I'm I'm gonna start. I have so many of these pumpkins and and uh, all these gourds <laughs> ready to go. I, I need to kind of figure out a schedule for myself so I can start doing these, some of these things. So uh, I'm impressed about how you guys uh, really are really efficient with it. So like what uh, I, I had a question for you in that regard. We'll how, see. Lo how, lo how long, how long should I, um, how long should I carve? Should I cap myself at two hours? Because I literally could probably go for eight hours if I don't stop myself. I would literally go for eight hours. Okay, yeah. I can do it. Don't, yeah, don't so, stop. I mean, so just keep working it, or is, uh, do, you know, obviously they say that you know the, you know, it's just abandoned at some point, right? But um, sure. but I should just keep on working on the skill, right? What I would say is definitely just put in the minimal amount of effort, and then you'll be golden. <laughs> <laughs> That's what that's what all my coaches in high school said. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Davis. No. Yeah, Mickey. I. I, I mean, I even, even like uh, uh, Villafane will spend eight hours on a pumpkin and uh, or you know like a, a project. Um, but the, you know the thing that's kind of universal. Whenever you start carving into it, the clock's ticking. And the thing's starting to change before your eyes. So that's the part where it's if you can still carve something and it's still um, responding back as a medium. Yeah, keep carving. Um, but if if, um, if you've got to a place where you think you're done, stop. It's like, uh, um, you know, it, it's a pumpkin for God's sake. So you, yeah. you can't you can't really go wrong. Yeah, definitely. That's that's what what I was thinking as well. So you know, it's nice to bounce it off some professionals. No? Go ahead, Paul. If you're having a good time at six hours, party on. If you're having yeah. a miserable yeah, time, yeah. then throw it in the trash. Yeah, it is. Gotcha. <laughs> gotcha. That's a good, good barometer. Well, then it's too late. Yeah. So I, I don't know if you asked this before, Matt, but is, is the weather affecting your carving out there? Um, no. Last night we got a lot of rain, which is actually really good, you know, the, the moist air for the pumpkins. So it was it was kind of a good thing. And today it, it was overcast in the morning, kind of uh, misty. And then throughout the day, it's supposed to warm up. Like right now, I'd say it's in the mid 60s. And by the time we finish at 10 o'clock tonight, it's going to be 72 degrees. Wow. Oh, wow. In Chicago. Okay. Yeah. In October. Yeah. In October. That's, That's crazy. Yeah. By the end of the yeah. week, it's going to be down in the mid 30s, but it's Chicago in October. Yeah. 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 So, but you know, it's kept, it's kept them really moist. So I can't complain. I mean, we yeah, showed up today because we leave. You know, we leave at night after the show's over. We just kind of wrap them with some cellophane, spray them down. And when we came back, it was like we never walked away from them. When he has passed, you come back, and it's really dehydrated. So, oh, it's, you know, the wet weather really does help. The wet, cool weather. We talk about it all the time, right? How do you preserve a pumpkin? Keep it wet, keep it cool. Yeah. This yeah. perfect weather for it. That's perfect. 
Yeah. So what's so far? You, you, Paul, you said it's been your is your fourth year there. This is year four for me. Yeah. The show That's has awesome. been going on for five years. Yeah. Okay. And, um, okay. How did you get so involved think, with it? How did you uh, get involved? Through, uh, through the same fellow that hired me for my first gig in Boston. That would be Tom Olton. And uh, John and I both did our first gig together with for Tom in Boston and then sort of migrated here to Chicago with him. So, wow. after, so uh, is that where you guys uh, met at the Boston show? Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, John used to live in, Bo not in Boston, but around or in the Boston area. And his very first show was illustrating pumpkins and sculpting pumpkins. So he's the he's the double threat. He can do both. Oh. He can etch them. He can sculpt them. He's a singer and a dancer. <laughs> yes, he's a singer. And a dancer. <laughs> oh, Matt. So, but tonight I'm going to do some gluing on. I'm going to try and put a big nose on uh, my pumpkin. We'll see how it goes. So, so let me ask you for a show, John. Um, for a show like this, and you're there for a couple of weeks, do you you plan out the uh, do you plan out what you're going to carve long in advance? Or, or I mean, you have to you have kind of a, a theme, or, or are you just kind of winging it? So I usually spend maybe like the five minutes before we start carving, trying to figure out what to carve. Okay. Um, yeah. So no, um, I would like to, but uh, I don't have that kind of forethought normally. Okay. So I just steal all of Paul's ideas. <laughs> <laughs> Same here. You just admitted he's the brains of the outfit. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's not going to go to his head. So how many other carvers are there, Paul or, or John? Whoever's got the mic, the puck. We've got two other carvers. We've got Stephen Junko and Rachel Colby. Steve's about three quarters of a mile away. I don't know if I'll be able to walk all the way over there. <laughs> we got lots of time. <laughs> no, but I don't know if I can actually make it. <laughs> Long walk. Yeah, and Rachel's right around the corner. Here comes Mr. Tomlin, the man himself. Awesome. We are live right now, sir. Yes, we're uh, in the middle of it. But we have a hockey puck for a, uh, for a microphone. So just tell him I'll take a I'll take a road trip over to Rachel's station. She, yeah. I think she has a live band going on right now. She's quite she has quite stage. Oh wow. We've got a stage. Oh, yeah. Rises and everything. All right. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Maddie, you know, you're really into that pumpkin. How how long have you been carving it? Um, th this is probably, I put, I put about two hours into it yesterday and then, um, but the thing was, I knew I was going to be carving here today. So I, I wrapped it up, put it away. And now, now I, I don't even know what I'm doing. I'm like, I, am I going to go deeper here? Am I going to make the face more? I don't know. I don't even know. See, and that's the hard part too. I want to kind of explain what's on his head or what's dripped on him. And I, you know, visually, and I am struggling with that too. So, um, yeah, that's kind of my plight in life. I love the uh, just the drips alone are super cool. And they're they're super fun. I I mean I literally started with them. I mean I just once I decided to make a few lines, I started with those, and then um, and I fit the face underneath so it would be kind of a natural contour for it to be going around a nose and around the edge of the face. Um, so it's it's be it's a lot of fun to make this, but um, it's just I can't really explain it yet. So I'm, you know, you want to tell a story and. Like when you look at your man on the moon, it's like a hundred percent instantaneous what you're doing. This guy's a little bit more, you know, you have to talk of story and having been on oh, shows yeah. and stuff like that. It's like, that's, that, that's the death, death's blow. And you're saying, no, 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 it's, it, he really, he's, he's a, he's a vampire, but he's got, he's got hepatitis and you know, he's got a <laughs> head injury and you know, <laughs> and then you have some ridiculous story. You're like, oh well, I can see that now. He's got a head injury. Yeah, okay. He's a Vietnam veteran. <laughs> he fell out a flight of stairs a week ago. You know. That's awesome. Yeah, you need, anyway. you need to write it with that carving so you can explain it a little better. That's right. I'll, I'll put a little uh, a rolling ticker tape. Okay, for those of you who missed this guy. <laughs> 
Yeah. So St- Steve says he on Saturday he's going to carve one that's uh, 1,600 pounds. Good Lord. Wow, this is incredible. I I I, uh, I don't think I've carved anything over like 400, and that that was just almost unwieldy. I want to I wanted to type in what he's going to carve on it. To be honest, I want to know. Yeah. yeah, what are you calling a 1500 pounder? That's how in just, just uh, hey, Paul, the ones that uh, like uh, that Mark and and Lenny and those guys do at the big uh, uh, the what's that Luna Park and and those things. So, those are those are those 1600 pound? I mean, is that is that kind of the size of what I'm pick, trying to picture how big that is? Is that like world record setting? Kind of, I guess, 2000 pounds is like world record setting, so it's not too far off. It's, Big big punkin. No, I was just trying to picture what a sixteen hundred pound pumpkin would look like. Um, Looks like one of these, just way bigger. All right, gentlemen. Have a good night. So yeah, tonight I'm going for a. uh, If we were to have spun the wheel, I would have. I guess I guess I'm getting old timey vampire. I'm gonna do Nosferatu. Nice. Oh, good. good. Any 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 specific emotion you would have gone with there? Well, uh, Nosferatu has that just that creepy, like the eyes all pursed up, like he's like he's scared almost, but he's not. Okay. Yeah. That's what I'm going for. Love it. I, have you seen um, what they do in the shadows, Paul? Yes. Yes. Oh, I what have we seen do that. what we do in the shadows. Sorry. Yeah, because it's Peter. Yeah, you know? I think of Nosferatu as like Pita. Yeah, that's that's kind of what I'm going for. Okay. But they have a big hook nose. I really yeah. want to focus and establish that. Yeah, a really sharp, sharp nose. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's my main objective for the next few minutes. <laughs> By minutes, I mean probably hours later, right? Do you expect to finish it tonight? Um, uh, I don't want to jinx myself and say, yeah, because I want to make sure that give the crowd the best, you know, the best car. I don't want to, so I'll do my best and it'll get to a point tonight where I, it's definitely recognizable. Yeah. But if I want to, you know, take, do the extra details and stuff, I might put a little time in it tomorrow. It's all about making sure that the crowd gets the best. So for this show, I mean, how many how many pumpkins are you gonna do, Paul? And and I, I'd love to know, kind of, because John's been there. So you do do like a, a, one or two a day, or what's the what's the what's typical? Um. Well, carve for five nights. Four nights. Uh, what's yeah, the good sure. for sure. Five nights. There he is. Hello, fella. Um. We'll carve for five nights, so I'll have four or five on the table. Okay. And if it, if I end up having four on the table, it's because I really want the extra, in the extra time to do appendages and stuff on one, which is what they want. Ah. You know, it's all the kids seeing the pictures and sure, you know, and up and being like, look at that, right? So Mickey right just showed a nose, nose for right. It scared me half out of my mind. Oh, now he's nose. <laughs> That's the first dad joke. No, right no, for Atu. So that's where I'm at. So have they always had carving on site like this? There. Uh, the second year. Uh, second year. year. Yeah, my fir- my first year was the first year they did it. Yeah, it's great. It's a great okay. event. Yeah, it looks like it. And how many people you think uh, show up to this thing, Paul? I mean, on a nightly basis. So we're we're running at half capacity right now because you know the situation. Oh, okay. Uh, normally we get, uh, I want to say five thousand. Oh my god. Uh, so I think that's going normal. Five thousand a night. Good lord. Yes. Lots that's a hell of a crowd. Oh, you should see some of it. It's, it's amazing. It's such a beautiful spot. Do kids like dress up and stuff, or is it just kind of they're there to enjoy the pumpkins? Say that again. 
the kid the kids dress up and like you get in their Halloween gear. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. It's it's sometimes great. we do. So yeah, sometimes we get into the spirit and we got caught too. <laughs> the spirit of uh, the botanic. Botanical spirit. Yeah, last it's year something. we had some last year on the last night we we got into it for the kids. It was a unicorn and it was a uh, penguin. Oh. <laughs> they did so well. They did. It scared one kid. You scared him? Yeah, I remember. I, I was. I had to go into the blow up and play for the unicorn. Put my hind leg sticking out three feet behind me. I think I turned and smacked him with my. Uh, <laughs> my uh, the invadable. Yeah. Didn't want that. What's that? Right? Boy, it's been a while since I blew the nose on. I forgot how actually large they are. Holy moly. Yeah, and it and it does take some patience. I remember the ones I've yeah, done where I glued on it. Tip. A lot of your work doesn't happen with your loop tools when you're doing that. It happens with your knives. Like totally. Trying to get those. That's the thing that's like, oh, I forgot all about that. I get so used to doing things one way. Yeah, if anybody ever out there wants to glue on, I think uh, I think John, you looks like you did a glue on for the muzzle of his nose there. Um, and anytime you ever do that, a nose or horns or anything you're adding to the pumpkin, um, depending on the size, it, you know you can use skewers, but it always uh, it always does really well with uh, super glue. But the big the big thing is just two flat surfaces. You know, and I think we've talked about that before, Paul. But that's that's the that's the magic. And if you can hide the seam. And get a little creative with it and make it you know so it doesn't appear that there's a, a line there even better but that just takes some you know practice that's and that's the trickiest part too is trying to make that theme right get right that there round object so right that's what it's fine but i think in the end if you if you do if you take your time it's like you know the building blocks if you take your time and do it right in the end yep. it's going to look fantastic you rush your way to that. What's the point, right? Yep. Yeah. So take your time, kids. Yeah. Make sure you go as fast as you can, but take yeah. your time. That's <laughs> just a no chop, no go fast with chop objects. Hey, Paul, can I ask you a, a, a question? Um, and John, if you guys want to chime in for just one second on this guy, I'm kind of at an impasse. So Sigma the Sea Monster doesn't have a nose. It literally these two googly eyes. And if you ever see it, it's these big plastic eyes and the eyes just spin around like crazy inside. And so they're never focused on each other. So I don't know. I'll, I'll figure that part out. But he doesn't have a nose. Right now, I've kind of got like a little bump of a nose there for him. Um, and again, this is kind of an homage, homage to him. I'm not trying to do a, a duplicate, but... I really want to do something with the nose. What do you guys think? Should I um, simple or should I kind of make it? This is the, the bastard, the millionth bastard son of a bastard son of Sigmund. <laughs> yeah, I think that way like, for something like that, kind of what kind of what's important is to just think about, and you can make it up, but there has to be some thought about kind of like the anatomy of the structure of a face like that. You know, so yeah. whether underneath whether it's a nose or whether it's just you know a, like a, a bone ridge separating the eyes um, yeah and again like you can totally totally make it up but i think as long as you're aware of that and kind of making conscious decisions you can kind of get away with just about anything in that spot i don't know the character um he's just a, a, a giant puppet he's like a big marionette looking little guy and so he's made of foam you know the the, the character itself is a big foam faced idiot um, and he's covered, he's the sea monster, he's literally covered with like foam and plastic and felt uh, seaweed um, normally. And I, I don't know, I just fell in love with these big drips. So he's, he's kind of, I know I can't go change that, but okay. I, I see what you're saying though. As long as the form of the face underneath supports it, I guess I can, can uh, yeah. keep it. Uh, oh, there we go. That, that, that's the, there's the idiot right there. <laughs> now, now I'm starting to get embarrassed. 
No, he just he, he literally Mickey pick pick like the third one over on the top. Just so we can see like the yeah, maybe see that a little bigger. If it lets you. Oh yeah, I guess the one below that. Yeah, so you didn't really have a nose, but there's a lump there effectively. I just but I was thinking maybe make him skeletal, make him, you know, make him anyway. The problems of pumpkin carvers. Yep. Pumpkin piece. Oh, maybe, you know, I like, maybe I give him some eyelids. Oh, that'd be kind of cool. Too. Anyway, all right. It's all, it's all magic. Have people started coming up to you guys yet? Have you started getting a crowd near you? Yeah, the crowd's just out to get to us now. We're, uh, nice. it's, a, it's always a slow trickle because it is a pretty big show. But once it gets rolling, it's fantastic. Kids start running up. <laughs> and do they stick around and ask a lot of questions, Paul? Is that pretty typical? I'm sorry? Do they stick around and ask a lot of questions? Yeah, some of them do. Some of them are really good questions. <laughs> yeah, some questions are questions. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, they, the, the kids get into it, man. I love it. Yeah. It's some it's the adults that ask silly questions, but... It's usually, it's usually the kid will the kid will really correct them. <laughs> like, Mom, Dad. <laughs> yeah, they um, because John has that cool Cyclops over there. They they have a million questions about that guy. Oh yeah. I'm trying to rough out these cheeks. I'm trying to see them in there a little bit. It's hard to see. You guys can't really see them. There you go. Oh, there we go. Okay. And the lighting looks pretty cool, Paul. I mean, the lighting, you've got it set up so that you can see the the uh, the pumpkin really well, uh, especially now that it's getting darker there. Yeah, it's not the, like uh, over, not overly bright, you know? Yeah, it's a lot of, well, it, it is kind of right up top in the tent so that as people come around, they can kind of see everything. But yeah, yeah over the top of the you can like call it LEDs and create a right. cool shadow. The shadows get really shown off well there. So that you can, yeah. Yeah, and the color great. is taking four years to perfect it. Yeah, taking four years to figure it out, but. <laughs> But yeah, and uh, yeah, you know, John and I carve together every year. It becomes this really cool tradition. And, so, do you have to do you have to carve a certain amount of pumpkins, or is it just free form? It's it's all free form. You, you know, it has to have a certain amount of fun. Yes, <laughs> yes, we have to make sure that we're entertaining the crowd and that John and I are having fun while we're doing it. Otherwise, we but we, John and I, get a little competitive with each other too. So, <laughs> like last year, we decided on the last day we were going to carve each other's face on pumpkins. Oh, that oh would, that's amazing. <laughs> but yeah, we generally, I mean, we usually pump out four or five pumpkins. Right? You know, yeah. John's extra week in the beginning, and he's already got all these cool pumpkins already carved. So, yeah. I mean, I know if I lived in the area, it would be a hot ticket to guess. Yeah. Yeah. That's so. So has, cool. so has there ever been a controversial moment there where people got competitive? What <laughs> competitive? I yeah. Like, no. like somebody walked out, said, "I have had enough of this." <laughs> <laughs> no. No. I will not that. carve with you. <laughs> there. It there is no controversy in pumpkin carving. Oh, it's all I, love, all love, all the time. All love. Good, good to hear that finally somewhere where there's not controversy. Every you know, every year there's been a new a new car, a new sculptor, or a new artist come in, and they, everybody just fits in like a glove. It's been really cool. That's great. You, know, you you miss you miss the the guys and gals that aren't here, and then you're kind of grateful for the new the new blood that comes in because everybody's so good. <laughs> Really, a great batch of artists. There's, there's no pumpkin carving uh, hazing that goes on. 
pumpkin kind like of a fight club type of scenario like a fight club Anything, like you gotta get dumped in you know <laughs> that's the first rule of pumpkin fight club <laughs> yeah you don't talk about it yeah i made the All mistake yeah. i'm out All business. <laughs> but it, so, it really is um hey guys I was, you know? I was gonna hey. ask you a question i'm oh, sorry you're talking to other people this is you know you, you got a crowd there and i'm sitting in my own um Dungeon <laughs> slash basement slash office slash you know whatever slash. Um, Rachel Colby, I am fascinated with that. Uh, she she doesn't only do the uh, etching and light from the back the way Paul and uh, and uh, uh, not Paul, um, Chris and um, Mark do. Right. Uh, Maniac pumpkin carvers, but she also uses paint to kind of help make those blacks darker and, and in such a beautiful way i mean she's uh she's clearly uh, amazing and uh and she has she been there the same time the same amount of years you guys have yeah yeah well, like, for a couple of them last year um she was out in california running it so wow could you, could you yeah. Have- yep yeah, yeah. She's, she's she's really yeah. good I'm, I'm super impressed by her painting skills and then you take that and add a layer of carving it's 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 tremendous yeah she's a very uh she's a very lot after uh pumpkin artist that's for sure yeah mickey if you see that mickey just pulled up her instagram if you see on the screen that top one in the center um is just fascinating i know she just made that at the at this event it just yep. isn't that beautiful i mean that's just that's just stunning you know it's just so uh, you, it, there's movement there's you know the light is insane and mickey if you remember when maniac pumpkin carvers were showing us theirs that that part on her the upper uh, i guess that'd be her left eye brow is just mm-hmm. carved further in so yes so it's like a negative but it's, it's just fascinating yeah it was really cool to see that because it's like and that that's what the kind of mind-bending thing about this is it's like oh wow it's like almost like doing it kind of in reverse so it's right. like from the inside out rather than the inside in, you know, like, so it's like, it's, it's just kind of mixed like, wow. And then, you know, illuminated from behind, uh, like the possibilities are endless. So mm-hmm. it's super amazing. And uh, what a great effect. Yeah. She's terrific. Yeah. Look at that. So, I mean, so, so Mickey, if you see some of the ones, that she, you know, she's, she's got a, a her, her, They've got it painted, like the Elvira one in the center is a great example. She's got it painted, but then got it um, yeah. sculpted as well. And yes, and, that, and that's just a, a, a very unique uh, way of doing it. Um, yeah. So the highlight basically is illuminated. Yeah, the behind. highlight is the part that's dug in, right? Yeah. And everything else is on the outside. And and then, you know the it's it just just really cool. It's just a really neat. There's so many different ways to do it. It's it's wild. Yeah, and like the the candles back here, or the illumination, and like the highlight of the chair and around her and stuff like that, and her hair, fascinating. Yeah, she's she's amazing. I wonder if now would be a good time to go well before it gets too busy. And uh, yeah, I gotta say, sooner the better. Do a little live shot of Rachel Kobe real quick before we get too busy. Sounds good to me. It's just like in um, Mickey. It's just like when we were uh, oh ninth season. Mike Pollock says it's their ninth season. Wow. Okay, and they're wild. Um, just like remember in um, remember when Mister Rogers would walk down the street to go see Mister McBeal. Yeah, exactly. And so we're yeah. Gonna, come on, kid, we're gonna take a little walk. We're gonna go. We're gonna go see another artist, good friend yep, of mine. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, I think this could this could be the furthest walk we've taken on the show. This will be a uh, history in the making. Yeah, it looks like a little Blair Witch project at this point. There we go. Now you can hear me, right? Yeah, yeah we can hear you. Sorry, I forgot I was connected to a Bluetooth device. Mickey <laughs> uh, was saying this is a little Blair Witch project going on here. Yeah, they have some great music. This. <laughs> it's, it's it gets better after the seventh or eighth time. 
but yep to see this, this trail is so long we're really just starting to see the crowds now so this is the perfect time i can get over here give you a sneak peek of rachel and get back there and make sure i'm entertaining the crowd there you right. go and what, what's around you paul are you walking by other pumpkins that are lit up or what are you seeing yeah oh wow okay wow oh hey rachel hello. say hello Hello, hello. Hey. Got a couple hello. of big fans right here, Rachel. That's Matt Hopper and Mickey Mondragon. Hey, guys. And John Davis. How are you? Good to see you. Hey, Great to see we're, you. There's John right up the street. Yeah, we're just in love oh, with your, wow. uh, Look at that. your art. That's, that's beautiful hello. stuff. <laughs> beautiful work. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Yes. We were just, mod they were just admiring your work on your Instagram just now. She did this one last night. Look at that. Oh, my God. Wow. That's tremendous. And little Edward. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> She's got her beautiful riser. <laughs> the rock star of the bunch. Hello, how are you guys doing? the crowds. Oh, good. What are you working on? Uh, right now, I'm working on a new pumpkin. Uh, the vampire from what we do in the shadows. Oh, really? What we yes. do in the shadows, vampire. Okay. My kids will love that. That's cool too. Oh, yeah, so, uh, what are these each night? And uh, show you guys how they're made. Okay. <laughs> All right, Rachel, we'll let you get back to work. Thank you. Nice to Take see care. you. Take care. Thanks, Paul. That's awesome. And sure. little Rick James in the background. Yeah, she's even got the better music. <laughs> I've heard the fry. I've heard the Freddy theme fourteen hundred times. Oh <laughs> no, it's all off. It's great. It really is a kind of complete experience. Yeah, I'll give you a, a little test. I don't want to give you too much. My girlfriend said that this is super fun. Yeah, um, hopefully one day we can make it out there. Uh, I was even telling Matt um, offline that uh, wouldn't it be interesting to have a uh, a show there next year foreshadowing oh. hopefully oh geez maybe on location shows that'd be fantastic that'd be yeah. fantastic. Got yep. jugglers and all kinds of entertainers exactly yeah it sells out really really quick it's a very high demand show yep so, so paul you said it sells out a year in advance um it sells out pretty quick i'm not sure how in advance okay but wow uh, yeah maybe maybe close to it it definitely That's months insane. and months in advance that I wouldn't, so I wouldn't cool. have any idea how to even get tickets. It's like trying to get tickets to a Patriots game last year. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm almost back. See? Yeah, you got a little hike there. Normally, what would it be? A lot a lot closer by, right, huh? Um. Well, yes and no. I, it's still a good walk because they, they do spread it out very well as far as the Carvers. Yeah. But uh, I'd say she's actually closer this year than in years past. Oh, interesting. Okay. So, oh, no. You're getting winded, Paul. I'm in like gym after <laughs> right now. Hey, Molly. Yeah. I would make fun of your cardio, but my cardio is much worse. Well, I have a restrictor on, too. <laughs> oh. That's right, yeah. It worked for a little while, and then I think it started cutting out on you, right? How am I now? Oh, sound very golden, very cinematic. You're golden, yeah, yeah. Woo. Thanks for the tour, Paul. Appreciate yeah. that. That was super cool. Hey, hey, hey. Next, and next, I need you to walk down to Grimaldi's and get me a pizza. And oh, uh, oh my gosh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Rachel's like Rachel's looking great already. She's already got ink on it. Hi guys, how you doing? Hey, kiddo. The man on the moon. <laughs> I feel like I'm one of the crowd, huh, Mickey? I know it's so fun. It's so fun. We don't we don't even have to like travel anywhere. We can be there. It's so fun. Yeah, it's kind of like a kind of like a virtual uh, virtual ticket to this event that you can't even get a ticket to, huh? Yeah. Yeah, 
So we, uh, for those who don't know, the, the, this event is sold out. So even if you were in, uh, uh, was it North Chicago, right? Uh, you could not yeah, get into this. Yeah. Not even a chance. It's very, very sold out. This ticket's going for millions of dollars. <laughs> <laughs> John, John has the uh, better idea of when it's sold out. He said it's sold out in August. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it creeps up, and then all of a sudden, yeah. If you're not on top of it, you're 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 out. Yeah. 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 What was There's there any water. point where you thought this wasn't going to happen? Yeah, I think I, I think everything been up in here for a little while. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I think there was a point where nobody thought anything was going to happen, right? Hey guys. Yeah, right. Yeah, good point. But yeah, they pulled, well. they pulled this one. Through. This is um, they they really did a great job of expanding it to you know create a safer environment. Mm -hmm. And uh, long, really, the trails are really wide and the, the paths are really long. It's very cool. So my, my girlfriend's down for some some Chicago pizza, Matt. She, oh, there we go. A big, yeah. Huge pizza fan. We actually we actually took a, a pizza tour in New York. Um, oh Scott's gosh. pizza tours. It's amazing. Uh, the guy who That's owns cool. the he literally has the Guinness Book of World Records. Uh, uh, f he has a record for most pizza boxes from around the world. So we went to go oh on his God. pizza tour in New York. It's amazing. <laughs> That's an actual thing, huh? Yes, I guess. Yes, you, you find it. You find it. You yeah. It becomes your passion, and what the hell? You get a you get a record for it. Yeah. Steve Elke used to carve it a long time ago. Yeah, cool. Very cool. Yeah. What's going on? So, Mickey, um, I, I've been to Chicago a few times. I my job job. I work in in healthcare yeah. and medical the medical field and there's a big event called RSNA Radio Radiological Society of North America that happens every year around Thanksgiving in mm -hmm. Chicago and mm -hmm. you wonder why why would you be in Chicago but it, it's the biggest event in of its kind um, in in healthcare it, it literally it McCormick places with this massive center in, in Chicago and it fills it up and yep. uh, it's one of the biggest uh, trade shows there is uh, at least yeah. in Chicago Mm -hmm. the man in the and oh, say again. Oh no, he's talking to so. Yeah. Um, but uh, the reason I'm bringing it up is I it, because it's right around or after Thanksgiving, first part of December. My God, is it's it's a, it's a shock to my system. Um, going from Arizona to that weather, Ugh. where blowing sideways and and below zero temps, and you're going from a nice um, heated you know, indoor, beautiful setting, and you're getting in a taxi line, and just from the line to the taxi, you're like, yeah. oh my god, and you're wearing a coat, you know. Yeah. And then yeah, you yeah. get you get to your hotel, and you have to leave the taxi to get in the door. And it, it for me, that's enough to like, you know, bl blows your mind how cold. And like, I remember one morning waking up and and um, getting on this bus to, to go there from the hotel, and and um, there's wind coming in it's like dreary and it's like you know 10 in the morning or maybe earlier and you can see wind blowing uh the snow sideways yeah and it's like yeah. I mean, what is that it's like yeah. going horizontal what's going on and i'm like oh i guess i'm in the windy city that's part of it but yeah my, it's um, really it, it's wild a, it's a really interesting dynamic i mean i moved to california because i said i can only i could only stand 27 years of the insane heat so yeah. I, I really, I marvel at people here uh, in Los Angeles that say, oh, it's hot. It's like 80. And it's like, oh God, no, 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 no. You know, yeah. that Arizona heat is, is crazy. And it's uh, a little I, yeah. yeah, so like when you, but when you go back East or even up North, even North Arizona, cause you went, you went to college in like uh, what would be considered like the middle of Arizona and, um, or actually, I'm sorry. Like you went to Yavapai, which is in the middle oh. of Arizona, but then you well, went to NAU in Flagstaff. Flagstaff. Yeah, 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 yeah. And Flagstaff is is um, really gets it's it's hard to really realize, but it gets one of the highest amounts of snowfall in the country every year. Yeah, it's up in the top five, six cities, and you think you got Buffalo, New York, and you got Erie, Pennsylvania, and all of a sudden Flagstaff hits the thing. But it uh, it's just, you know where it's located, and it gets some pretty cold temperatures. It's, yeah. 
it's because it's, it's right up by nice. the Grand Canyon for for reference. Yeah, you know. Yeah, it's really pretty. Yeah, and uh, actually, uh, fun fact: I was supposed to go there as well. You I still can, Mickey. I still over. can. There's still time. I'm still alive. I'm still That's alive. Right. <laughs> Until you're no longer stuck in oxygen, you can go there. That's you right. Know? Like Pearl Jam says, I'm still alive. <laughs> it's the quote a song from 91. Yeah. <laughs> can you imagine that's now considered classic rock? Pearl Jam. Oh, oh my Pearl God. Jam. Yeah. All right. I'm throwing my brain out the window. You know, you know, it's also wild. And this is kind of funny, too. It's like you, I flip through the channels and you hear like on, on Sirius, there's uh there's relatively new alternative alt, alt nation and then you have like a couple other channels that are more grunge and, and other things and you can listen to um foo fighters and all of them yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 they're, or, or they're now a classic peppers, rock band right you know, peppers and all of them you know it's like yeah pretty, pretty crazy yeah I, I people would consider candle box a classic rock group <laughs> i don't consider them anything but horrible <laughs> That's Paul loves Candlebox, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's uh, he's he's entertaining the crowd. I think I think this is one of those things where now that the crowd's gotten yeah. to those guys, Mickey, you and I got a lot of heavy lifting. We got to carry this thing across the goal line. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, like uh, Mick Frazzle Staff Studio was asking, like, how long it took to take uh, to make the man on uh, the man on the moon. So um, we'll definitely get that question to him at some point, but I think he's uh, he's now entertaining. We made, we made that last – I think he made that yesterday. So I, I imagine knowing Paul, he's pretty fast. Um, I bet that was a you know, three-, four-hour sculpt, but yeah. it's a big pumpkin, so I, I could be speaking out of you know, turn here, but I think that, that's a nice one. It's pretty impressive if he, if he went with no reference because didn't you say that he likes to go with like no reference? A lot of times he does me, and the, you know, Mickey. All all the shows we've been doing recently that are, um, you know, the, the wheel. I um, we, those have all been zero reference and just kind of pulling out of our our brain. But that's crazy. I, I I think uh, sometimes when it comes to this kind of thing, you're probably gonna have something from a reference point, um, um, or kind of memorize it first. One, one way or the other, you just don't want to you don't want to get in front of a big crowd and make a mistake. I, you know, like for instance, I'll give you one one more. Um, I'm going up this weekend up to um, Scottsdale to carve at a place called the Scottsdale Quarter. And it's this beautiful outdoor mall. And they have a, a event called the Boone Brew where there's breweries and cool stuff going on. I'm in. Anyway, so I'm going to bring a couple that I finished. And then I'm going to have, you know, carve one while I'm there uh, in the few hours. And and um, the, the, the fun part in my mind would be just carve something off the cuff. But then... If I if I don't like it and I make a mistake or whatever, then it's in front of a lot of people. So I probably will have some kind of reference and have an idea of what I want to do first. I mean, that's just yeah. yeah. Well, only because it's in front of people. If it's if it's in my own living room, I don't care. You know. Yeah, I think I think uh, as an artist, I mean, you almost have to like. Um, I, I'll, I'll back up. So one thing that I, I I as an artist that I think that is good, especially when you're doing these types of things that are instantly like recognizable, especially in my web work, I have to show my, what, what are called wireframes. So it's like, people go, Oh, I want to move this. I want to move this bit of type. And I'm like, no, it falls off the grid. So it's like, you almost have to have that kind of like working, like little grid, um, or, or some sort of reference. So you can actually just go, Oh, this is where these eyes go. It's like this eye, the, the thing that makes it unique is this. So like, like for instance, the thing that makes this unique, that's very distinguishable, like from what you're showing, I'm going to, I'll cue in on it is, you know, the thing that makes it the Sigmund and the, and the sea monsters is that tongue. So if it didn't have that tongue, it wouldn't be the same. Okay. Now I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to start crying because that's a tooth. Oh, that's right. That's right. The, the tooth. I'm sorry. I, no, I, but I, 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 okay, I haven't finished it, but it will be, it will be a flatter straight tooth. Yeah, but I, I, it, it, yeah, exactly. So, so. Please, <laughs> but but I mean, but that but that's just it. That's so like now I know what I have to work on. Recognizable. So yeah, yeah. Now I got to make it straight. Right. Thanks a lot, Mickey. I feel terrible. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't realize it was it was a tooth. You know what? Uh, this this Sid and Marty Croft stuff. I was never really into. 
I know of it. Terrible I know TV, of it, but I, I couldn't tell you. I couldn't tell yeah. you if it was a tongue or a tooth. Yeah, Land of the Lost and stuff like that. We we like that. Um, but yeah. other than that, this this was terrible TV, and it was yeah. You know, I thought it was too hippie -ish for me. Yeah, it was just it was just lousy. It just wasn't even funny. It was just banana splits and yeah. anyway. You know. Banana splits I could get into for some dumb reason because it was it was goofy. Well, it also was like a variety show because they had like cartoons and stuff mixed in too. Yeah. Um, you know. Now, hey, guys, uh, uh, go for a it. A little bit of a lull. I just wanted to try and back in. When we get that big rush of crowd, we're going to get inundated with questions. So, sure. So you guys are going to have to. I mean, and I'm love listening to the conversation, but we just can't. Yeah. <laughs> I, no, it's all good. It's all good. Over. All right. Yeah, yeah you're, you're there to perform. And, and John just went alien on us. John just blew up over there. <laughs> he, he, yeah, his thing exploded. Yeah, look at look at John's. What's going on right now? <laughs> Looks like a stack of crayons. <laughs> <laughs> Is this where we do an Android commercial? <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> his whole screen turned into like the prism of color. Whoa. Oh, that's wow. we, we, talked, we, we started talking about psychedelics and hippies, and all of a sudden, John John took it literally. <laughs> no, I was pointing my phone, and somebody was standing there on this. <laughs> that's funny. Uh, good times. <laughs> I'm I'm just gonna keep it up there because it looks it looks pretty amazing. He he's full on. He's gone. He's gone full psychedelic on us. Oh, look at that. Whoa! You know what it looks like? It's like that station hey. you can't get. Oh, there you go. It's back. Whenever it screws up, we just have to tell John to look, and it'll fix it. So. There you go. Hey guys, how you doing? I like I like listening to the kids' questions. I just love that. Like what? Like what are they asking? Uh, it was a, a whole lot of a whole lot of f bombs. That's what I heard, but I. <laughs> No, I, they, I just, it just, I, I didn't actually pick it out either. Hey, Lorette. Hello, hello. Look who's here. Paul, you hey, might know Lorette. Yeah. Yeah. Um. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just heard like some kids asking questions I, and I, I couldn't discern what they were saying, but it was, it's just, that's the most fun when, when they're, yeah, you know their eyes get wide and they're they're yeah. asking those questions. It's just it's just a ton of fun. To... It's cool. It's cool. Definitely. Yeah. Why are pumpkins orange? <laughs> Why are they orange? <laughs> yeah. What what what? what you know, how how did you do that? That's the other one. <laughs> well, where do you want to start? Yeah. Well, let me start at the beginning. I was born. Lewis and Paula Harper met in. <laughs> yeah, well, in Hartford, Connecticut. Did they meet in Hartford? Whole... I thought they met in Hawaii. Are they? They, they, they... did. They did. I, I think I was. Uh, I think I was conceived in Connecticut, though. Oh. My brother was conceived in Hawaii, and and he has that claim to fame. But I, I no. no. <laughs> was this a family discussion that you had? Hey, how, do you know this? how do you know this? I, I still hurt. <laughs> I'm just thinking of. I just looked at. The, I just looked at the calendar. I'm like, this is something. I I was I right was there. found under a cabbage patch. That I that is. Hundred yeah. percent true. It's all I care about. <laughs> you you are a cabbage patch doll. <laughs> oh, thank you. I don't know. If that's that good. I mean, you know, in, in the in the worst possible way. I mean. It. So what did Paul say? How cold is it there? Like seventies? Seventy something. Yeah. Yeah. So Lorette was asking, how cold it is there? Oh. Yeah, but you know, compared to where he's from. It's Absolutely. uh, it's balmy. It's hot. You know, I mean, yeah. right now it's yeah. probably like 30, 40 below in Boston. So yeah, not that bad. Maybe. I don't think. <laughs> I know it's cold real fast. So by the end of the week, it's going to be down in the forties. So when when are you there till Paul? I'll say that again. When am I here till? Yeah, the show, the show runs through Sunday, and then um, we have to close out the show on Monday, and then I'll be home Monday night. Nice. Yeah. It's a whirlwind. So, so the closeout part, are you actually carving anymore after Sunday or are you just kind of clean it up? No, I have a lot of um a lot of commissions, a lot of behind the scenes commissions. Oh nice, okay. I drew Halloween. So 
It's just so you're, doing those, you're doing those there. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna do them at home. So while I'm here, I'm gonna hopefully get some really cool pumpkins carved. Kind of like always. Hey. No. Yeah. But I'm gonna stick. Yeah, yeah. John's so, gluing his hand as we speak. Oh, let's let's take a look at that. Yeah. Ooh, I like it. We got tooth number one. Yeah, yeah. That's it. Yeah, there it is. I told him he has to do every single tooth out of potatoes. That's right. No corners. Not any corners. Yes, sir. How are you doing? Very good, thank you. So, what are you gonna um, do? say again, oh, say again, Paul. You, oh. what's, what's Matt going to do for the pupils on his? Uh, I don't know, Paul. I, I, I don't know whether to go really deep in or kind of that when you have a pupil and it's out further, it kind of looks lighter. So it kind of looks more milky, like a, like a dead person. Um, yeah. Or a zombie, but I, I think I might carve these in a little bit. I don't know. I think you should carve them in and add, um, yeah, add the pupils. Wow, look at that. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I, right, right now I just kind of have them outlined, so I'll, I'll go in. It looks great. It's very smooth. So yeah, smooth. you know what? I, Paul, I found, I found a new tool that's becoming my favorite, and it's this guy. It's this little, it's this little triangle that's... Uh, it's a saw oh, yeah. blade, saw blade on one end, and then it's got a round version on the other, so it's flat on on the back and then serrated, and then this one is kind of more round, and this one is just a, like a wire spring almost, and it's and it really okay. helps smooth stuff out if you just kind of rub it around on, you know, knocks all the little stuff down. Yeah, the tool marks. Yeah, it's a great little tool. It looks great. Yeah. Hey guys. Where, where where did you get that? Um. God, I don't remember. Um, there's a there's a really good sculptor um, named Turkey Merck. Oh yeah, um, who does right. he does these yeah uh, clay a lot of like a lot like Ron Free, um, you know, uh, Big Duluth, and um, and I think I saw them on his site. He's got a guy who's who makes these you know one off, and they're in there. It's a, it's a nice, really heavy duty uh, brass tube. And it's crimped, and he's got them in there really well with you know epoxy, and they, they're strong as heck. I mean, they're they're great for for what I'm using. I I bought them and didn't use them for a long time, and then broke a couple tools, and now I've started using them. I'm like, why haven't I been using these? They're they're really good. So they make really nice deep cuts. So this basically this part right here is is just an old um, bandsaw blade, not a bandsaw, but a uh, a jigsaw blade, really thin. Yeah. So if you can see it, it's kind of got like the really big serrated ends. And when you mm -hmm. when you drag it across, it makes pretty good cuts. But then you turn the other side and you can smooth all those out instantly. Oh, so that's, that's super cool. So I got that going for me, which is nice. <laughs> Man, I didn't hear where you got that tool. Is that a Kemper? No, this is a um, – and it's killing me. I can't remember the guy's name. He's a, he's a, um, it, it was a guy who uh, is friends with uh, Turkey Merck. Okay. Oh, the guy Ken, who does Ken, tools. Ken School. Yeah. Ken School. Ken, Get some of those. That's it. That's it. Thank you. Yeah, great. I, I got a couple of small ones for clay. I didn't get any for carving. I didn't know he made tools that were that sturdy. I, they're very um, delicate for like really fine um, detail on clay work, I know. But yeah. Know yeah I, like pumpkin carving. I, I, I just wanted to see if they, they would work, and I, I bought them, didn't really use them that much, and then now I'm using them a lot, and uh, I'm just hoping to God they don't break. But they're they're really sturdy. I mean, they're they're, they're holding up really well. Yeah, they're very nice. Hey, guys. How's it going? Thank you. Somebody tells you that you... <laughs> oh, um... So while he talks uh, to some of the crowd, um, that's one of the things that is going on right now. Like, so they have people going past and looking at them creating, and they yeah. they're able to interact with everybody. Yeah. Um, and I'm sure that that um, you know, since we're in an hour into the show, so we're kind of on the the oh back boy. side, the back nine, as it were, of the show. Uh, we have a half hour left. I wanted to ask you, Matt, 
So it is October 22nd. Yeah. And we're coming up to our next show will be um so the 29th, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Um right so the big day. do we do we have any plans are we going to you know let's we we should have a uh, a carvers and creators uh meeting so you guys can all be in this. So do we have any plans or do we have any anything that we're going to start doing um to kind of have it I mean maybe we should just keep it simple and just do the wheel well, we, and, we, do, we do have a couple of surprises up, up a sleeve or two so i certainly would recommend you chime in um on that last show before things before the big day but i think what we're going to really focus on is is teaching people uh some some tips and tricks we're going to spend a lot of time not really sh showing you what we're carving but maybe you know have, sharing a lot more with the audience we do have, we i think we've got a couple couple special guests lined up that are going to help with that as well uh, at least right now, it's it's always tentative at this time of year, but we we certainly have some uh, some great ideas. I but I, I do want to say that for those watching now that want to kind of perfect that pumpkin that they can put on their porch two days later um, for for Halloween, something they can be proud of for their you know for uh, the Halloween night. Um, make sure you tune in because we're going to have lots of cool stuff to talk about, like some some things that you know we've talked kind of around them before um right on these other shows we talk about tools and techniques and stuff but uh, we'll get into the nitty-gritty and and um you know mickey you'll be using your zoom button a lot and we'll talk about how to hold knives how to hold different things when to bring out a specific tools. so there'll be a lot of that fun mm -hmm. um but then going forward which is kind of mind-boggling to me because we've got a pretty good following uh we're gonna keep we're gonna keep the train rolling um we've got guests still lined up into November. Um, and we may take a step back away from pumpkins a couple of times because we've got musical guests. We've got other, um, we've got painters. Uh, we've got um, other clay carvers um, and, and sculptors uh, as well. And so I think at some point, Paul and I might even take a, 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 a stab at doing some, uh, some clay. Mm -hmm. So, and then as the year kind of progresses um, and we get into Christmas and stuff like that and run out of some of the produce, um, we, it's kind of unknown, right? I mean, this is a, a loose and fun show just with a bunch of artists. And, I, it, and if, uh, if we still get a crowd, then we'll still, we'll still be here doing it. And um, I, I, I think this is, if nothing else, it's just been a, a really fun diversion. But think about next year, right? So now we'll have, uh, we'll have kind of the, the, the run up into to Halloween next year, and it'll be even that much more exciting. So the world is uh, still to be determined as far the as the world that. is our oyster. Yes, the world is not enough or something. The like world that. is a vampire. <laughs> you know what, Bruno, how are you? Very good, thank you. Yeah. Actually, that that's actually pretty appropriate. The world is a vampire uh, here in Halloween. Whoa. But yeah. I mean, this has been an incredible journey. I mean, we're only, um, you know, what, 16 episodes. Uh, we've done this for 16 straight weeks. But um, we don't know where it's going after Halloween because you were saying that it kind of, the, the interest kind of wanes, right? But I think that having uh, different, you know, bringing on different, like artists, like uh, artists of all types. So musical artists, uh, some other um mixed media artists uh, would be fascinating yeah. while you guys just carve and we can interview them. I think that that's fascinating. I think it, it's still an interesting show. Um, it, yeah. You in the comments, it, it, let us know. I mean, I know that the pumpkin carving going on up to Halloween, Halloween is, I, I say there, there should be two um, extra holidays of the year. Uh, one is Super Bowl, and the other one is Halloween. That those should be official, uh, like when Groundhog Day or Arbor Day is is considered a, a, a holiday. I think Halloween and Super Bowl should be uh, holidays. Excellent. But absolutely. But but you know so so th I mean th this is totally fun. I mean uh, Matt and I have a lot of uh, musical uh, connections uh, that we can uh, bring on, and and so let us know in the comments if if you're if you're interested in in that kind of thing. I mean this is. This is essentially this is your show. Um, oh, look, yep. look at Pat Cavanaugh says uh, appropriate because it's also smashing pumpkins. Boom, nailed it. 
Yeah, especially the ones we don't like. Those become smashing pumpkins quite quite quickly. Yeah, yeah. Literally. We don't yeah. Talk, we don't talk about those pumpkins. No, no. <laughs> so we're getting it. Love it. Keep on going. So um, yeah, we were wondering if we should go to biweekly. If we just go, you know, do this every week. I think it's I, I you know. I don't think that we'll lose any momentum by going bi-weekly, but if people are really enjoying this, let us know. I mean, that, that's the kind of feedback that we really enjoy. Who knows what's going to happen after you guys get on that YouTube show? You know, there, there might be a lot more people that we're going to have to uh, quote unquote entertain. So well, one thing, Mickey, one thing, Mickey, that I've found is um, um, there's, there's, there's avenues of things that I absolutely love uh we got nita 73 nita carver for your show steve you got it you got to explain that a little better I don't, 73 need yeah. a car for your show the 73 so, need is the part that we don't get <laughs> yeah. so but mickey the, um so think about this this stuff so i'm a huge fan of of walking through people's uh workshops their their mm -hmm. studios their and just kind of being like in awe of the tools and everything like that like we did with with ron free and um with 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 um, Villa Fane and those guys when they when they kind of give us a, a glimpse behind the curtain, um, but how about doing that in like um, uh, a special effects uh, studio or doing that in a um, um, a puppeteer's studio or a painter mm -hmm. studio or, or other sculptors of, of stone or or marble or you know those kind of things that to me would be a really cool kind of adjunct maybe for when there's not pumpkins around um and just spending a lot of time in people's um in people's yeah. studios i think that'd be super fun i for me shoot i I'd, I'd watch that show all day because i just that's stuff i love so yeah absolutely uh, yeah. Dude, last year we were both on a tv show really? outrageous pumpkins yeah i'll listen listen there okay let's listen in let's listen in <laughs> yeah so it's a part of my weekly routine at this point thank you no that's that's great great feedback we really appreciate that and we really appreciate your uh dedication to watching us every week it, it definitely helps well you know you know it's fun and i i love hearing that um and i think what's fun about it is is it's just like oh hey it's thursday let's put, put it on and it's it's a show that people can can you know watch or they can kind of have in the background while they're making dinner or, or whatever but it is it is just like you know pretty it's 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 pretty effortless you know to just kind of be involved and and see what see what gets created which is the fun part and this is the first time i've ever seen paul pause before during one of these things He's talking to tons of people but it's it's kind of fun to, yeah it's kind of fun to see uh like i could tell it's it's a disruption, but at the same time, it's, he loves this stuff. And, you know, it's, it's a ton of fun to be able to watch it. No, they're there. It's, 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 it's a different level of like, for instance, when you were doing the show, uh, Halloween wars, you didn't have any audience in there. Um, uh -huh. this is much different because it's almost like kind of a different level. So it's like you're working, but you're also have to like entertain the crowd. So it's, it's a very totally. interesting dynamic. Yeah. Yeah. And, it, and, it, and the, the hard part is is um, kind of keeping a focus, uh, but when there's no crowd around, you can just sit and carve, and and it's a uh, it's it's a nice quiet space again. But yeah, it's it is fun because I've carved a lot for like kids' classes and for uh, you know at at different events and stuff. And and when people ask me questions, it, I, I eat it up. It's just a ton of fun to just be able to talk to them, especially if they really like it, and, and you can see it in their eyes that this is something they want to try. But like, think back to like, how, how old were those kids that were, that were talking to you? Um, it ranges. I mean, there's like teenagers that come in and, and like three of them will be like, oh, cool. And the other one will be like, what? You know, yeah, and, yeah, and yeah. It, those kids that you really like, you know, hone in on. And then there'll be, um, you know, a, a 10 year old walking with their family and, and, and their family will continue walking and he'll just be sitting there or she mm -hmm. and just be like, you know, draw, jaw drop, and yeah, and those are the ones where I, I, you know, it's not like a an ego thing. It's more like, hey, there's a passion there, there's an interest, and I, that's where I, I just get excited about. So like the those types of like little things, um, that that, because I mean, yeah. like as as a, as an artist, 
like I take those little slivers of inspiration. Like yeah. for instance, I, I would say like, you know, uh, watching, you know, baseball on Saturdays, the, the, the MLB game of the week, uh, watching wow. cartoons, watching, uh, you know, afternoon specials, um, you know, watching all these different things that, um, that inspired me. It's like, you think that they're little slivers, right? But they all add up. So like right. maybe seeing somebody doing like this, they're like, Oh yeah. I remember like going to this thing as a kid right. and it just sticks with you. Like they were doing this real, this, this carving or this uh, sculpture. It was, I, maybe they might not even remember like what, like it, I think it was a sculpture. I think it was like, they were doing something with, I, I don't even know if it was pumpkins or, or different, you know, like, right. so like you have these fuzzy thoughts, but there are things that stick with you for a lifetime. Yeah. And especially as an artist. So uh, I, those are the types of experiences that if you guys are doing them out and about and, but you guys are accommodating, you guys are just like, nah, get away from here. You know, like, you know, get out and scoot kid. But it's like, but <laughs> if, if you, if you're in, if you embrace it, and say like, Hey, come on in here. Cause I mean, you guys have talked about this before. Like, nah, get in here, like shave a couple, like, you yeah, know, see, see what it feels like. And it's like that, that, that those memories last a lifetime. Yeah. You know what? That's, we used to do that. We used to the kids kind of scrape away, obviously not this year cause of social distancing and whatnot, but we kind of had to slow down because if you give the little sister the chance, the big brother wants to do it. Oh, the big yeah, brother yeah, wants yeah. To oh yeah. 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 And all of a sudden you're yeah. like, uh, I need another pumpkin. You guys just cleared the surface. It's, you, you right there. <laughs> I yeah, I can, I can see that. Yeah, you, you create some yeah. fights. Or, or, or they break the tool. <laughs> just answering the question, you know, sincerely, like taking, you know, taking the time to answer their question. Yeah. You can see that, that they're like inspired by it. That's really yeah, wheel cool. turn. Yeah. Yeah. He, the here, here's the thing that, here's the thing that I think is the difference is, is you're approachable. Like right. a lot well, of art, yeah. a lot of artists aren't approachable. Yeah, especially well, in their pro especially in their process. Well, this is such a fun thing. I mean, how could you take yourself seriously when you're doing this? Honestly, this is a really yeah. fun, silly yeah. thing that. Would... Yeah. John's getting all upset like pumpkin carving silly. <laughs> he's carving a werewolf. Getting in the um, he's he's, he's a method he's a method sculptor, so he's he's really yeah. grouchy right. <laughs> yeah, he, he's, he's he's Daniel Day Lewis again. You know, he's like, you know getting into exactly. his character. So McFrazzle yeah, so, Stash yeah. Studio uh, actually says I have an alarm uh, set to my phone for your show every week. <laughs> oh, that's awesome! Thanks. Yeah, Dude, that's, that is so cool. Thank you. That's, that's, a, that's very too, flattering. I have it too, but it's so I don't miss the show. <laughs> 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 I'm late. <laughs> so. Uh, yeah, as you it comes in, they come in, uh, everybody's in time slots, so you'll get this huge, the cool rush of people, and then you get a yeah. small break. So, so sorry for the uh, break in the action, everybody. But No, no, no problem. We got you covered. Paul, Paul, I'm yeah, carrying you your water. I'm carrying your water today. You got to, you got to, you know. You, you are. You owe you me owe you owe yeah, exactly. Papa, right? <laughs> so Mike Pollock has a question. Matt, where are you located? Would love to have you carved live next year. Wow. I'm in, Woo! I'm in. Sunny, sunny Tucson, Arizona, but I am close to an airport. So, yeah, I, you know, I, I love it. Yeah, I, I appreciate that. We, we, I carve um, this time of year, it gets super hectic. And as you can imagine, with uh, like schedules, like, like, look at, you know, Paul and John are just, you know, in, knee deep in it. But um, yeah, carving live is just an absolute, you know, treasure. I, I love it. And, and I'm, Paul, you can attest to it doing it as we speak, but. Uh, it is just a, it is a really fun experience. It really is, and and I'll tell you, well, uh, Mike Mike is the the man behind the whole show, so that's a really high praise that Mike is asking you if you want to uh, do some live can, carving. So, well, but count, uh, count Mike, count me in, my friend. Yeah, I'm 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 uh, I'm certainly happy to to go either place, and and uh, yeah, anytime. I'm uh, I'm I'm have, very I'm I'm actually blushing a little bit. I'm you know. Thank you. I'm glad you want. <laughs> I thought that was your lighting. Oh, that was light. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm usually not so white, so red. Maybe that's it. <laughs> so the, the question the is, the question is, is Paul using a potato as a microphone? <laughs> a hockey puck. It's a hockey puck. <laughs> <laughs> but of course. 
And uh, yeah, we, we all lost John's video and it's not an indictment on the Android platform. Not not an indictment whatsoever. Oh, John, you dropped out. John, your phone dropped out. It's an indictment, right, Mickey? Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Okay, got it. We'll get you. <laughs> As someone who works on the Mac and Android platform, uh, I will remain neutral. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> I want I want to like Android, but the I people. Why? I couldn't I couldn't change. <laughs> I'm so such an Apple guy with all my products. But yeah, I know. I'm, I'm the same way. I have too I'm much invested, way. for sure. At this it's point, heck yeah. It really does. I mean, nothing against it, but yeah. Nothing against it, but just just totally hate him. And if you have <laughs> nothing against it, but everything against it. Yeah, but everything everything. Against it. <laughs> I, 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 What's going on? <laughs> yes. So, uh, so yeah, let's my, pile. My, let's pile on. No, I'm just kidding. One of one of my favorite things is when uh, you know you, you get somebody walking up and and they don't know if it's if that's really a pumpkin, you know. And that's, they're like, and they, and they that's do this. They, a, they, yeah. come over, they come over and goes, "That's that's a pumpkin." Like, and they, and I'm like, "Yeah, that's a pumpkin." And yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, and it and it takes a little while to get it to look like that, but believe me, it doesn't stay like that. It's it's it goes away quick. That's the that's the fun of this. I mean, it's it's um, I'm impressed about how, like, um, and and if you don't follow a uh, Harper Sculpture Deborah Customs um, uh, on Monday. Instagram, yeah, please please go. And I, I'm impressed about how many how how much work every week that you guys are putting out. Like, it's hard to you know, keep up with all the work that you guys are doing around this time of year. And I think that, I think the challenge will be in the off season, as it were right afterwards, kind of like, you know, after Christmas, you know, everybody doesn't want to, they're done with Christmas. Uh, my birthday is on January 4th. That's I'm sure that's why everybody forgot about it because uh, there's Thanksgiving there's Christmas and new year's and my and birthday is well. January 4th. <laughs> and they're like, Oh, who cares? Oh, but yeah. it's like you know they they everybody checks out you know uh, after these things so it'll be interesting to see how we carry this show along and still make well, it maybe, interesting. I, I'll tell you one thing. I mean, the, if I hadn't met Paul, I wouldn't have had any near the the amount of uh, practice. Um, but we Paul and I discovered butternut squash, and knowing that those are year round has been a savior for us because we we, we I'm, I'm a huge butternut squash fanatic now. I just love them, and I. I Cringe sometimes when I look at a pumpkin. I'm like, uh, it's, it's not going to be used like a butternut. But so I, I personally am. I don't see myself letting up on carving year round anymore. Uh, yeah, it was totally should. seasonal for me. And um, but now that I've seen kind of the progression of where you can go uh, artistically and kind of the growth you can have by sticking at it all year round, man, I'm not stopping. This is too fun, you know. Yeah, and and I, I think I think we shouldn't stop. I agree. Yeah, I think we have a lot of, uh, you know, we have a lot of growth that we still can do, and uh, you know, as artists, but also as a show. So I I think people are really digging it. Yeah, and and some of the the, the requests for big group classes and stuff like that are, have been insane, and mm -hmm. and um, so yeah, I. Regardless of you know, forget the show. I mean, we're doing it for for people to to kind of have fun and 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 watch at this point. So I'm I'm just thankful people do. Um, at the end of the day, you know, they they could find better things to do with their Thursday night, but the fact that they're here hanging with us is like the best. So that's what I think yeah. is really cool. Yep. Yeah. 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 So Pat Kavanaugh says continue with the butternut squash and potatoes. Uh, totally agree. Totally. Totally, yeah. Steve says I get that same question. It is real. Uh, which question is that? Yeah, I don't know what. Which question, Steve? Oh, is it real? Okay, I think I know the. the answer. Oh, is it you real? Is it real? Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, yeah, totally. I got it. Okay, sorry, sorry, Steve. Yeah. So yeah, people, people like touch it. They like look at it, think it's fake, and they come back. Wait a minute, that thing's yeah. an actual pumpkin. Yeah. Yeah, because so, I, I said it's like most people think that the 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 actually car the 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 jack o' lantern popcorn is the way to go, but like this is different level, amazing. 
I love a kid voice there. Yeah. It's all pumpkin. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> That's right. You're a little hey, carver. Some, some of my uh, uh, pumpkin carving friends will know this one, but a lot of times, like the number one question you get asked is, "Do you do wood? Do you do clay? Yeah. Do you, yeah. you know? I mean, don't do something that sticks around." And we've talked about this till we're blue in the face, but that that I think is the universal question we always get. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that makes sense. I think that the, with, um, you know, the advent of, of phones and, and uh, different ways of documenting it, it, it does stay forever in pixel form. But um, so I think, uh, yeah, I, I, don't, I what, what would you do if you had a whole bunch of sculptures of like this? Yeah, that, that, I, I, that I, would, wouldn't, I wouldn't keep them. Yeah, like, well, right, so, right. So Ron, I mean, like when it comes to like, you know, doing it in clay and having a, a fun little business out of it, he wants them to go, you know, and, and he gets a nice, he'll get a, he'll get somebody to buy him. And I, I think that's, that's, it's, that's fantastic. You know, for me, it's like, um, the, the camera's kind of it and it's about, about where it ends. Um, you know, except for when someone commissions you away, obviously. Right. But, um, yeah, it's just a different, different way of doing it. And I, I think you can't go wrong. We like doing it for you guys. So your your sister has an interesting thing, and, and tell me if this would work. Uh, you should do a show where you carve watermelons towards summer. Our water watermelons are, are, are would be pretty tough, right? I've done watermelons a few times, and and what I found is that um, it's they're really cool because they have such a color change, right? Green, white, pink, red, oh, yeah, like as yeah. you go in. So you can do more like you know, bloody things as you go further in. And, um, but the interesting part is like, with the way it grows at the top, the stem, they have these reeds effectively inside them. So where this, you can just scrape away. Uh, um, those, you hit those reeds and it, they start to tear. Yeah. So you, it's really more of a knife thing. Yeah. And when you get a little deeper, it's so wet, you know, because from the, uh, from the red, um, the red part, I mean, it certainly can be done, and it is done all the time. But it's it's just it's a different beast than a than a um, watermelon uh, than a than a pumpkin. It, it a seems pumpkin. to me it would be a little bit more watery and 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 a different kind of consistency than a than a pumpkin. Yeah, obviously, it, it it really is. Yeah, and it's it's not bad. It just it's just different. right. It's just and different, yeah. right? So, um, uh, McFrazzle Stash Studio. Uh, Thank you for heaping the praise on us. Please never stop. I look forward to the show every week. I've learned a lot about 3D carves and hope to fit one in after the Halloween season. You guys rule. Thank you. Thank you. That, that's high praise. Thank you so much. Thank I mean, that is, that is really cool. Second the eye. Little modern version. We'll have to have McFrazzle stash on the show with us sometime when, and he can, yeah, he can, that, uh, that definitely. Well, we'll definitely, um, uh, definitely uh, get in touch with us um, somehow. We'll, we'll, we'll track you down and we'll, we'll get you on because I think that was one thing that we wanted to do too, was have some people that are, um, that are, that are doing this with us. Um, I have uh, my friend here in uh, Arcadia, California, or Duarte actually, um, which was, uh, she's a teacher and she's been, she's jumped into this, her and her students. So like, it would be great to see, how she does stuff um and uh you know it, getting some expert instruction uh lorette says uh, do you have a photo book of all your carvings that would be very interesting too yeah to to take all your all your uh photos you know, and put it into a book that'd be very interesting yeah i mean there certainly all exist lorette in in um digital form so yeah you're right why not make a book out of them and uh and you know make it pretty I think that that would require more hours in the day, but other than that, I, let's do it. Well, you know what I used I, to do is I, I I used to make a book every year. I'd make a book of the year before. Oh so, wow! Um, okay, I, that's she's smart. Asking. She's probably kind of asking why I haven't given her a book this year. That's probably <laughs> it. It's a loaded question, from what I'm hearing. Okay, she's, she's actually asking me, Maddie. That'd be a lot of that'd be a lot of squash. Hey guys. Hey, how are you? Great. How you doing? Good. 
So we we are actually at an hour and a half. So wow, again, this has flown. So yeah. wish I could have contributed a little. The universal yeah. truth of this show it, it, it just goes by too fast. That's it. I, I That's think it. you did great, Paul. Um uh, and and yeah, so th this this has been a, a tremendous what what you know, the fact that everything went off without a hitch, uh yeah, is, on, a remote, fantastic. on a remote car. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Let's so we know uh, we can do this. We'll do our final reveals here as to what we're working on at the moment. And so that's where I'm at right yeah, with, with no. So it's taking a little bit of shape, but I got a long way to go. But that you got the hook nose going. And okay. then we got John. Oh, yeah, it's looking great. So he's going to have kind of kind of oh, bug so eyes cool. or wide eyes, right? Oh, wow. Yeah, that's really big, coming around. Great eyes. So that's where we're at. So wow. I think this went off pretty good. Amazing. Amazing I love stuff. It. I love it. And, and my guy, my guy is starting to kind of take a little bit more shape. He's he's still a little dopey. Um oh, look, but I'm I'm, start, I'm, start, I'm starting to define these little drool drooly things again a little better now. They make his tooth a little straighter and yeah. So he's gonna it's gonna take some work, but he'll get there. It looks great. Yeah, great stuff. So as always, please follow, like, subscribe, tell a friend. Uh, we're on all these social platforms, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Just John Davis on Instagram. Is there anything else, John, uh, where we can find you? Or um, is that a good place to find you? Follow Paul. That was John. <laughs> he's, he's very engrossed in his work. John's very deep in his work right now. Entertaining crowd. Now, make sure you go and follow John on all those platforms that he just mentioned. He's a fantastic yeah. artist. Yeah. Good stuff. So, okay, Monday. Um, Tuesday. I'm sorry, Tuesday. Tuesday, Tuesday is on where, Matt? Where can we find you Mythical Paul? Morning on YouTube. Just follow follow those guys. Like, subscribe, follow, and, and do whatever other button you can push for them. Uh, they, you know, they've, they've got a few million, so they don't need it, but... But make sure you watch. Just make yeah, sure. Yeah. You Turn on notifications. It. You guys are going to be on there. So it'll be, we definitely want you not to miss it. Don't miss it. Yeah. No. And no. Uh, and so next week, uh, the March to Halloween, we have some uh, fun stuff planned for you guys. Uh, so that will be on the 29th, if I'm not correct, uh, mistaken. Right. Yeah, 29th. So um, – so that is the show we had planned for you today. This has been a fascinating journey. Um, you know, have a great fun in Chicago there, uh, Matt. Um, Matt in Tucson, and I'm in Los Angeles. So, like, it's, it was great to travel to Chicago for a night. Uh, great job. Take care, John. Take care, Paul. And well, we will see you here Thursday, 4 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We will see you next week. Good night, everyone. See you guys.